All right, so let's try to learn what we can do to actually troubleshoot front-end issues. And uh, at this moment, all of us should know that um, in terms of Zabbix components, there's always a Zabbix server, the front-end, and a database. All of them are kind of separate parts, but at the same time, uh, most commonly and, and let's say in a default installation all of these three components will be deployed in the single virtual or physical machine so on the same server um, despite the fact that we do have um, API as example for let's say centralized configuration um, basically management and most of the Zabbix administrators are doing a lot of the job in the CLI. Still, the front end is uh, like uh, the biggest, um, biggest place uh, your user interface for your employees, where they do view some dashboards, graphs, where you need to configure some hosts or items, right? And uh, there are a couple of issues that are like most popular in the front end, and, and um, despite the fact they are very, very, very easy to fix, uh, still very frequently people, users just uh, don't know how to do that, and uh, they end up just uh, living with this problem. And um, in this video, I wanted to start with uh, like the most simplest and the most common one, which is not related to slowliness of the front end. But let's say that um, you have a configuration host, uh, you're creating some items or triggers, and uh, then you downloaded the template from somewhere and you need to import it inside your front end. That's a built in functionality, so nothing new here, just configuration templates, and there is a button to import. So, what we do, we click import, uh, then we need to choose the file. And there we go, so export the templates. I will double click, I have the file name, I click import, and that's it. So there's no, um, let's say, screen with a success. Uh, and actually, if I would look inside the configuration templates, I would see the template was not added. And this is kind of mind blowing. I don't know, I could do like, let's try it again import, choose file, templates, import. And again, nothing happens. And the most frustrating thing here is that there's even no error message, right? So it's a just blank page. Everything continues to work. I can open any other page. I can uh, create a host, uh, call it test, put it inside a new group test, host added, there it is. But every time when I try to add a template, what I get is nothing just blank page and this is just my example for you with the templates but it's not the only page where you can get this result let's say you open monitoring latest data and uh, usually you do a filtering on a host or a host groups and in case if you select like um, host group which was has uh, hundreds thousands of the hosts and you don't use any filtering on the item names you click apply the page um, loads for a long time and then again just a blank screen just like you saw in the previous um, previous page with the templates so what it actually is and uh, you'll need a CLI to fix it and uh, just a couple of commands to do that first of all um, that happens the blank page or it could not be blank you could also receive like importing the template uh, the circle spins for 20 seconds and then um, page not found or uh, HTTP code 500 or something like that. So the first place to look is the web server uh, error log. So remember these are three separate components, the front end server and database. If you have some issues with the front end, don't look inside as Zabbix server logs. You won't find like um, basically anything useful there. Um, don't first thing to do look in the database log you have a problem with the web front end which is running on a web engine and more or less it has nothing really Zabbix specific it is just a web page which has uh, PHP files which is running on a native Apache web engine by default so what we're gonna do uh, we're gonna check the error log which is 
uh, var log httpd or underscore log if you use uh, Ubuntu or Debian the location and uh, names will be a little bit different but I believe you will find them so and you see what I have here so allowed memory size exhausted try to allocate this amount in uh, using this PHP file so that's our problem the error php fatal error allowed memory size exhausted this is the main reason why i am not able to import my template and how to fix it so all you need to do is uh, choose any text editor that you have uh, go to the etsy httpd conf d .conf. Uh, this file is located right here uh, by default, if you install uh, Zabbix Frontend from the packages, and if you have uh, CentOS uh, or any other RHEL operating system, and here you see I, I had to change this parameter to actually uh, show you uh, how the blank page looks like. So if I want to fix it, I will just delete this one with uh, 15 megs the memory limit and uncomment the default one, 128. So right quit. Uh, when I need to do restart HTTPD and this is done so I can go back to the front end go back to the templates click import choose the file template import import successfully and now I have the template so yeah like uh, in empty installation I had to decrease it to 5 15 megs um, to actually show the problem but in big uh, production instances and big front ends so in huge templates let's say if you have uh, some template which you are linking to um, which is linked to let's say hundreds or thousands of the hosts and then you are re-importing this template which is doing update on all of those hosts again there is a big chance that uh, you will see just a blank screen and uh, it's not only a memory limit that could happen so this was just the example but the most common ones are the memory limit um, execution time and also the max input var so anyways if you have something like a blank page or the http error code in your front end when you're doing something check the error log of your web engine allowed memory size so open the zabbix.conf memory size memory limit kind of makes sense right increase it and uh, it might seem strange but in the big installations of the Zabbix again you might uh, need to increase this up to like 10 gigs to actually successfully import some huge template that is performing a uh, change to a huge amount of the hosts so this was just a simple part about uh, typical issues in the front end with with the blank page when you're doing something also annoying thing and i will not be able to demonstrate to you how it actually looks like um, but i believe most of you have faced it so the slowliness of the front end when you click uh, monitoring problems as example very common page to be slow and um, you click and just wait then 20 30 seconds until it opens then you could go to let's say monitoring latest data again do some filtering and you have to wait like 10 15 20 seconds which is a bit frustrating and nobody likes that um, how to fix that and what could be the problem and there actually could be a lot a lot of issues uh, that would require some attention to improve it but what what we can do so first of all think of what you are selecting again like the latest data right i can select the latest data with my zabbix server host and think about uh, the front end is communicating with the database so the front end has to pull information from the database when i have a filtering set up like this it will collect the latest data only from my zabbix server hosts and don't forget that we are grabbing the latest data which comes from the history tables which are the biggest tables in all the Zabbix database so if you have let's say a terabyte uh, big Zabbix database most likely 950 gigs is with the history so if you are filtering only on one host most likely your um, page will load much more faster 
if you will filter on absolutely everything that you have so all the host groups all the hosts all the applications all the items without the name filtering also include items without the data in my example since i have just four or three hosts you won't feel any difference but in the production if you actually set up a filter like this here just select all of them there is a big chance that you won't be able to uh, load the page so you'll have to increase those parameters and uh, web engine that I just showed you so always think of what exactly you are selecting if it is latest data then do the filtering don't try to select absolutely all the hosts that you have if it is uh, monitoring problems also if you need to uh, see some specific information then search for some specific information information don't try to select absolutely everything from the database um, also the killing point might be uh, some other users of course uh, the more users you have in the front end the slower it will be it just it works like that if you have 20 30 users daily online doing some things uh, checking the latest data uh, checking the dashboards it will also slow down and any of those users can actually do a simple mistake uh, which can affect the performance of all of your user frontends, not only for him. So let's say he has his own dashboard uh, with, um, I don't know, it could be any widget, uh, problems or host availability, um, doesn't really matter right now. So uh, he could have this, I will add something, or just check here, Zabbix server health, uh, Zabbix server problems, no, not really. Add a dashboard, add a new widget, um, problems, plain text, system status. Okay, uh, yeah, doesn't really matter. So, what I'm trying to say, uh, what is that simple mistake that they could make? Again, don't use the filtering, so they could select. Uh, everything and uh, so make the request to the database huge and then change the refresh interval to 10 seconds right and then they could have many widgets and they think that hey i want to see everything and very frequently uh, change this to let's say also 10 seconds and every 10 seconds the front end this widget will be performing a database query the more queries you have inside the database the slower it will be it will also be locking some tables so other uh, front-end users will definitely feel the degradation of the performance so uh, check your users there is a way to check that globally through the database um, or at least remind them that there's actually um, they should not set the refresh to like minimal 10 seconds or even less than some other widgets without any proper reason uh, what else <coughs> um in terms of like uh, the queries uh, every page selects some different information so monitoring dashboard each of these widgets is gathering information from uh, different tables inside a database monitoring latest data from the history uh, monitoring problems mostly from the problem table also events events recovery so a lot of tables are involved and uh, how we can troubleshoot when something is slow. Uh, simply go to administration, uh, user groups, and uh, your, well, it's for me, right? I'm just logged in with the admin. There is debug mode, so just click here. It becomes enabled and refresh the page. See, this debug button came up. Uh, basically, what it shows, a lot of information. Um, a lot of information which might seem like all right this is very frustrating and uh, probably it's not for just the simple users and this is just for the Zabbix developers I don't understand anything which is absolutely not true uh, there are just a couple of things that you need to focus on so first of all if your page is loading slow then one of these lines uh, will be le much more than just 0, 0.0 seconds so we probably will be talking about 10 15 20 seconds and uh, sql time means that uh, 
the time uh, required for the front end to get gather information from the database is that big. Uh, let's think about the possible reasons, like why our queries might um, take a lot of time to return the data. First of all, if our database is uh, located on a separate server, not on the local host of the front end. It might be a network issue, right? So the network speed might not be the best at this moment. And uh, don't use just a simple ping, um, let's say, oh, it's 15 seconds, ping database server. Bing goes through, then no, there are no issues. No, it's not like that. Um, there could be still a connection, but it might be much slower than it usually is. Uh, what else? Uh, you might be using a database with a default configuration file, right? So uh, MySQL, actually just like I have it right now in uh, my example. So see, nothing here. Uh, MySQL D also include the CNFD server CNF, but I also haven't added this. So this is not um, ready for the production. In the production instances, you always need to uh, tune your database configuration files. If you won't do that, your front end uh, will be slow and also the server will be slow. Uh, you will see a lot of slow queries, which of course is bad. So you need to do the tuning. Uh, what else could be? Uh, there might be problem with some queries, right? Uh, because um, if we will scroll down, you see that uh, all of these are the API requests that our frontend is doing and not really relevant for us for troubleshooting this part. So SQL queries, the comment for the transaction and then any a uh, lot of a lot of queries uh, and here in the brackets you can see the execution time. And then like 99% when you have a slow page from these like 20, 30, 40 plus queries, most of them will be 0.0, .0 seconds, but then you will find one of them that will take like most of the time that you are waiting. Um, as example, uh, from events like this would be very popular query. Uh, why? Because it is touching table events and uh, table events is spammed heavily in, uh, uh, let's say, not uh, the best and the cleanest environments of the Zabbix, uh, which is also uh, you can try to fight with it uh, by tuning administration general housekeeping events and alerts internal data storage network discovery auto registration setting this up to one day because there's really no reason to keep this longer than one day and uh, another option that you can check uh, go inside a database use abex and uh, select count source from events uh, group by source order by one desk this so in total there are like four uh, sources where zero means trigger events so when the trigger goes uh, to the problem state it creates an event when it goes back to the uh, recovered state it creates an event um, I don't remember the sequence but one was for the active registration so every time the agent connects a new event is created one was for the network discovery so every time when the new device or the service was discovered or lost, again, new event. And three is uh, for items, triggers, and low-level discovery rules becoming supported and not supported. So this one is the one which is spamming this table heavily in dirty Zabbix environments. If you have a lot of misconfigurations, typos in your items, templates, these, source three, will have millions entries and if you have uh, like five millions of events trust me your front end any page that is uh, interfering with events table will be slow if you will clean these entries your front end and not only the front end also the Zabbix server will become much faster all right um what else? So yeah, find the query which is slow and try to understand why it is slow. Do you have some tons of uh, not needed entries inside this table that you could clean? Um, don't try to overthink like 
everything is fine with the queries. You don't need to modify the schema of the database. The indexes are fine. If the query runs slow, then there is an issue with your configuration. Either the database is not configured, either the network uh, performance, or maybe simply your um, database hardware specs are not uh, good enough for the Zabbix size that you are running. Um, what else? So in the beginning I showed that uh, there are two fields, so total SQL time, which will be 99% of the cases, and this one, <coughs> like if you see the total SQL time 0.0, .0 but total time 20 seconds, then you see, know that uh, the most slowest part is your web engine. Why web engine could be slow? Um, well, I I would say basically the only reason would be that your web engine server where your web engine is uh, hosted is overloaded and that again could be caused by um, many many users doing many many things also some API requests so you would see the CPU utilization on the server is very high and um, so yeah that's like the server troubleshooting not uh, the Zabbix troubleshooting. Uh, in terms of the web engine, all of you should be used that Zabbix comes with an Apache, right? And for a long, long time, there was no other option as only Apache um, available out of the box. You still was able to configure the Nginx uh, on your own. Basically, you had to take the PHP files from the sources and then configure the Nginx with the PHP FPM and that, that, that did the trick. So starting from 4.4, you see uh, when you are um, downloading and installing the Zabbix, you can also use the Nginx. And um, you can listen to anyone and any opinions, but trust me, properly configured Nginx will be faster than Apache. Um, much, much, uh, much, much more faster, right? Uh, but only properly tuned. And... Um, if you have some other issues, like if you have a default database configuration file uh, and your database specs is one core, one gig of the memory, then of course Nginx will not do the trick. Um, it will not be the magic that you change from Apache to Nginx and everything becomes super fast. It will still going to be slow because the web server is not the issue. But if we're talking just generally about the planning of architecture, when you are, let's say, deploying a uh, new setup uh, that will be meant for many users working in the front and viewing the graphs and, and dashboards and whatever else, I do suggest to pick the Nginx, definitely. Um, Alright, so that's, that's it for, for this video. This turned up much, much longer than I expected and I do hope that you again learned something new. Um, probably the first topic with uh, importing the templates is uh, most widely uh, known problem and and so hopefully you won't hit those again um, thank you guys just like usually leave those comments click the like subscribe and see you in the next videos goodbye